the license plate is off of a Bluebird school bus from uh, from Tucker, Georgia. That's how he got a GB tag. In this day and age, bravery is in short supply. But fortunately, some officers have it in spades. In this video, we will look at cases where brave cops stand up to corrupt officers. Starting with the first one, where an officer's keen sense of observation leads him to an unbelievable discovery about another cop. On September 1st, 2023, Atlanta officers responded to Fair Drive SW and Metropolitan Parkway in in reference to an auto accident. As they arrived on site, they noticed a 47-year-old Samuel Smith had his wrists restrained with handcuffs. When they investigated his wife, they found something that left them stunned. What's going on, ma'am? Somebody just hit us at the red light. This is my husband. Is he okay? Sir? Yeah, handcuffs? Why is he in handcuffs? I can't answer no questions, sir. Hold on one second. Leave him there. 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 <laughs> Radio, can I get a photo of my location? I have a black male with lacerations to his face. Got him the fuck out of there. This is what happened. Uh, is what I would bet money on. Who took the handcuffs off? I don't know. Yo, whose car is this? How did he wind up in handcuffs? I didn't talk to that in my handcuffs. Sorry, we just love the Which Um, uh, Peaches. Peaches? Okay. I got you. Over on RDA? Yeah. I got you. Okay. Did you guys get into it with security over there? Yeah. Sir, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. All I know is that's my husband. Gotcha. Say less. I'm going to grab your Appreciate it. I don't know. Okay. That's fine. You're good. What's this? 1306 radio. Fuck around like a easy car? <laughs> what do you work for? Homeland. Okay. Um, did y'all have some up here a little bit ago? Male and female get into it with anybody? Yeah. Sure Left in a pair of yeah. In an effort to investigate, the officer went to the strip club, but after talking to a Department of Homeland Security special agent present at the site, the officer realized something was off. Is it just a scanner? The jacket in the in the back seat is just a regular old uh, raincoat. It doesn't say police on it. Got it? Beautiful. Put this in the bag with all of the other evidence, because that's going to be evidence yeah. also. You don't have light. So I guess it's not... After investigating the suspect's vehicle, the officer realized that his license plate belonged to a school bus. Something deeply wrong was going on. The agent was identified as Terrence Jack, who was not a Department of Homeland Security special agent. Thanks to the officer's acute observations, this cop impersonator was put behind bars. Some people are just crazy, but some are devilishly deceptive, like this next officer who played the whole department to fulfill his needs. I didn't say anything like that. I never made any comment about taking anybody down. In 2011, a former deputy named Scotty Mendenhall was applying for the Anderson County Sheriff's Office. He wasn't hired, and he believed that Deputy Lewis had something to do with it. Later, Deputy Lewis was brought in and investigated, and what the investigators found was shocking. What happened is I got a call from, we were on, I don't remember what day it was, we were on third shift. And I remember where I was parked at. I was parked outside of Kingsgate Subdivision on Batesville Road. I got a call uh, asking me from Stan Whitten, telling me Scotty was going to apply over in Anderson County. Um, I got, uh, I, I used to fish with a guy over there, um, pretty good friends, and uh, Gary Bryant, he's a major, and uh, I called Gary and I said, um, man, this guy's coming over to apply for a job, y'all. And like I said, this was a request to Stan Whitten. I said, man, I said, guy, guy coming over here to apply with y'all. I said, his name is, uh, I said, I may have told him his name was Scott. I can't remember. I said, Stan uh, told you to call the major or something, or told, told Stan him. Said, Stan said that he was going to call, or Stan said, asked me if I'd call over here and put in a word for Scotty. So I called, uh, I called Gary, and I said, hey, man, I said, this guy's coming over uh, to apply for a job. I said, hey, I'm sure I told him his name. Um, you know, what he just called and said something out. And uh, I said, he's a Citadel grad. I said, he's got a couple of medals of valor. I said, this thing was service over here. I said, and uh, I said, he's not working for us anymore. I said, he needs a job. And Gary said, okay, um, press the case. And, you know, 
Pops in at work for y'all. I said, man, I said, he left in short order. I said, that's all I day. I said, because at the time, I didn't know which guy he had fired, and I still don't know. He was fired, resigned, quit, and I don't know what happened. So at that point, that was the end of the conversation. We never talked about it again, and then, you know, all those came up. So that's pretty much it. Have you talked to any of your supervisors about this? Or did the captain talk to you? Yeah. So far, Lewis seemed like a reasonable guy, but as he continued talking, the truth began to spill out. And the reason... Was did Scotty call you? Or did he not get the job or something? I mean, how? what have you heard about that since then? No. Or have you not heard anything until... No. I mean, I, I, the last thing, you know, just people talking on the street, uh, the last thing I heard was that Scotty had applied or was working in Charleston, was moving back to Charleston was the last thing I heard. I mean, I don't know anything about the kid. I mean... I mean, I, is is Stan friends with him or something? I mean, is that how he knew that he was? Oh uh, yeah, I mean the way I understand it, they're pretty tight. Oh, okay. but you know, I don't I don't run in that circle. I mean, I, we like, hadn't talked to Stan, so I no, I don't run in that circle. So, just for the record, you didn't say anything negative about Scotty. No, I did not say anything negative about Scotty. I mean, those are those are. So your point in common was to assist him or help him get a job there? No. Or kind of. No, I wouldn't even get that far. Okay. My, my, my point was to call over there. I did not ever at any point tell Gary that he was a great guy he needed to hire. I didn't mm -hmm. tell him he was a sh**. He needed not to be hired. I didn't tell him one way or another. Okay. So I wouldn't say that I called over there to get him a job. I did what you know, somebody asked me to do. You can clearly tell that Lewis had some personal grudge against Scott. I mean, why else would he not endorse him or say something positive about him even after someone asked him to? I called uh, Captain and I said, uh, heard I've been transferred. Captain. And he said, no, Captain. And I said, all right. He said, yeah, we moved you to Echo temporarily until we can figure out what's going on. I said, all right, that's fine. We'll stop that part of the story right there. Okay. In February of this year, Doug Borton and I started the process of trying to get me switched over to Echo. Amy's uh, school schedule, we knew it was coming. We we knew ahead of time it was coming. The kids have been accepted into different schools, special schools. Um, we knew all of these issues were going to arrive. The schools have become more demanding. We had advance notice that there was going to be some issues if she had the kids at school before a certain time or after a certain time. So we kind of knew that this thing was, was coming. What's talk, that she's, a she's a teacher. I talked to uh, Lieutenant Borton about it, and he said, all right, well, let's start the process. It's fine. I said, well, you know, over the course of the next several months, I said, we, you know, whenever. I said, I'm giving you advance notice. I said, because August is when the school year is going to start. I said, so I'm going to need something in place by, by August. Okay, great. So he said, six, seven months notice. This is perfect time. We can do this. So Lewis wanted to get a transfer for his kids and gave a six-month notice for it. I said, that schedule's not going to work for me. I said, I need this where I'm guaranteed that I'm going to be off in the morning when the kids, you know, even if it's only for four hours sleep, four and a half hours sleep, I'll come on and take a nap. You know, as long as I can be there to make sure that the kids go somewhere that during the daytime if they're sick, I can stay home with them. Amy can split her class in the afternoon and still get a full day's work in. And she's been there all day. So, you know, everything was kind of, kind of in line there. When I went to Echo, when I found out I was going to Echo when I was at GTI, I'm like, all right, well, something apparently worked. Somebody said something. Ridgeway stepped up. Something happened. I just assumed. I didn't mm -hmm. say anything. Right. So I come back to work, uh, pick up an Echo car, had swiped that Tuesday because I was supposed to go to the Echo hours to work Wednesday, Thursday. I come back and I pick up an Echo car and I drive the Echo car. While I'm driving the Echo car, I get a call at SWAT Tuesday afternoon when I was leaving the SWAT train at probably 4 o'clock or so. I get a message from Megan. Give me a call. I said, all right. I called him. I said, what's up? He said, man, he said, I'm looking forward to you coming in tomorrow. I said, for what? He said, for Charlton. I said, first time I heard about this. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, you've been assigned to my platoon. Okay. I said, well, I'm not going to be able to come in in the morning. I said, because I was planning on working Echo hours, so I have to be available to take care of whatever the situation is with yeah. kids. After trying his best to get on a schedule of his choice and failing, Lewis finally took a voluntary demotion and was transferred as a deputy to the Echo Platoon, where he could work the hours of his choice. At least, that's what he believed. Because the captain said, starting on, on Monday, which would be the 5th, you'll go to Echo as a deputy too. Uh, captain, who's aware of this? Just give me a Captain East. Captain East. Hubbard. And, and Lieutenant Hubbard were the only two at that point when we were in his office that had seen my letter. Okay. And they said that it had been approved above them. The captain said, you know, the major's aware, you know, every, this has been approved and all that. Okay. So the captain said, all right, well, I'll, I'm going to call down to, I don't remember her name, Sally. I'm going to call down to Sally and uh, I'll have the personnel order cut. Okay. I said, okay, great. 
So I walk out and uh, Captain one way out and the captain says, no, you know, there's got an open door policy. If you want to go sit down and talk to him, you can. And I said, well, you know, it's not, if he's already approved it, I'm thinking, well, I might even, you know, I, would, I mean, no offense. So, this so I, I called Lieutenant Hubbard and I said, have I ever at any point told you that I was going to echo? And he said, no. He said, as a matter of fact, we don't know where you're going. That's been the big thing the whole time. And I said, okay. I said, I just want to make sure that I never at any point. He said, we all assume that you're going to echo because those are the hours that you need. He said, but, you know, nobody has ever told you where you're going and you have never told me where you're going. And I said, I just want to make sure that I didn't give the wrong impression or anything like that. And he's like, all right, yeah, that's it. Why? And I said, well, no, nothing to it. And then I told him, that's the day that I told him, hey, I got wind men in all five complaint. And that was the day that we had that conversation. Yeah. That was it. I came back Sunday afternoon. I got a call. They said, hey, you're still on my platoon until further notice. I don't know whether that's three days, three months, three weeks, or three years, but you're still on my platoon until further notice. I said, okay. Despite knowing his transfer was not final, Lewis celebrated the transfer by having a celebratory breakfast on what he thought was his last day. But unfortunately for him, the transfer didn't happen, and this pissed him off. You want the flat out truth? I'll tell you the flat out truth. I got railroaded, period. If you don't talk about anything at all, people will make up their own. I choose to keep my mouth shut about it in Mendenhall. I keep my mouth shut about whatever's going on with Bravo. You don't say anything, people are going to talk. Eventually, People are going to start listening to what's being talked. And I'm tired of getting the sideways look that I'm the cause or reason of Bravo platoons. The whole investigation. That's what was said. Uh -huh. That I was the cause. Then it got out that I was the one who spread the rumors about Cheryl Cromartie and Billy Brewer. Okay. That whole thing came out that I spread all these and that's that is not true. That is not what happened. I can tell you where it started. I can tell you how it started. I can tell you how it ended up. And I can probably tell you who spread that rumor. But it was not me. But when my face is not present, they're going to point a finger at me. Nobody else would step up and do it. There was no sergeant. There was no lieutenant. And nobody gave a so Points were filed. Statements were made. Things were written. They all just magically disappeared and vanished. Nobody But at the end of the whole thing, I'm labeled the troublemaker. I'm the one with the problem. I'm the one that gets transferred. That's Did you ask to leave Bravo? No. Oh, the only okay. time I asked to leave Bravo was when I asked to go to Echo. Right. If you if they had left me on Bravo, I'd have been fine. See, I didn't, you know, I came in here after the, at the very end of the Bravo thing, so I didn't have any knowledge of all that I asked to leave Bravo stuff. for two. They asked me to leave Bravo. What do you mean they? They moved me. They moved me to Echo while I was gone. So, yeah, I think it's... I think I got railroaded, and it pisses me off. As far as the complaint goes with Richard Wayne, personal opinion, I don't have anything to back this up. Lewis was angry, and that's understandable, but his rage led him to say some pretty nasty things about Sergeant Lane, one of his supervisors. Have you ever said anything about taking Sergeant Lane down and taking Dallas with him? Hell no. I didn't say anything like that. I never made any comment about taking anybody down. There, about like when all of this started. You mean the phys whole... physically or like no, 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 like in here. Hell, no. like if if something were to happen to where you go, now it makes or, sense. Or get get. That, now it makes sense. I got a phone call the other day. Some dude was running his mouth that I had been in OPS for two days writing statements on people. Who said that? Some kid on the fucking south end. I don't even know who it is. But now, now you're talking about yeah, 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 now I know. Now it's starting to make sense. Now I'm digging. All right. Now I know where that came from now. Okay, go ahead. How, how, do, we, how do we find out who? who I'll was find out who it was. I'll let you know. Not knowing if you're going or staying or mm -hmm. all that. In the midst of that, I don't know if you thought something was under investigation in here or anything like that, but it was kind of like, if something happens to me, I'll be sure and bring them down with me. Not, not physically hurt them, I just mean... I know what you're talking about, absolutely. The way it was portrayed to us as if, nah. you know, going to make sure that... No, nah, I never made that comment. I never said anything even remotely close to that. As a matter of fact, just the opposite, I said, I told a guy one day, Sergeant Lane and Sergeant Gladson were talking to two kids about something that they had done on the north side of the county. And I told them both, I said, when they came back and told me about it, what, what the conversation entailed, I told them, I said, listen, I, I don't agree with what they're telling you. I said, but you do what your sergeant tells you to do. This is my opinion, but I'm telling you, do what your sergeant tells you to do. I, matter of fact, it's been just the opposite. Lewis flat out denied the allegations against him, but a According to one deputy, one night when they were on duty together, he got out of the 
car in a rage and said that he was going to take Sergeant Lane down, and then f at Sergeant Gladson saying, take his ass down too. The deputy who snitched on Lewis had no motives to do so, but he thought that she did. If you think this cop was out of his mind, then wait until you see the next one because what he did is pretty hard to believe. So, uh... Reached out for my lighter, slammed the ass. Cool. Yeah. Not really. On January 1st, 2021, Scott W. Burzek was cruising near 6200 W. Newberry Road in Gainesville, Florida, when he collided with a vehicle that had just begun moving at a green traffic light. Officer Brooke Shutterly rushed to the scene and instantly identified Corporal Bertie Burzek as the person involved. What unfolded next was a true spectacle. So, uh... Yeah, reached out for my lighter, slammed the nip. Cool. No. Not really. Not really. Yeah. He didn't want to do an information exchange? No, he does. I just, no, now I found it. Okay. Well. Okay. Alright. Are you okay? Oh, yeah, no, I'm good. Well, your airbag went off. Your car's. Oh, no, absolutely. Which I just find me that one Neil's off, he can come give you a ride. Do you want me to let him know you found the insurance? The same and... thing. Well, maybe you should not do that then. <coughs> so, uh, you want me to let him know you found your insurance, see if he wants to do an information exchange? Christ. That's fine. Okay. It's insane how Scott was worried about his car, more than the fact that he had just put a lot of people's lives at risk by driving under the influence. No, we don't take pictures of it because crashes are civil. Yeah, whenever we do any kind of crash reports or anything, unless there's a DUI involved or, you know, like a hit and run or something, a criminal aspect, we don't usually take photos. I'm just trying to figure out which lane you were in. So you in the far left lane. Birdie, he wants the report. You got your driver's license? Absolutely. I'm guessing the car's registered to you? Yep. Cool. Thank you, thank you. Officer Brooke clearly knows that his supervisor is drunk, but she tells the man whose car got hit that they can't take a picture unless there is a DUI involved. That's a little suspicious of her. But then, she goes back to talking to the supervisor, and he is wasted. Give me a second, because I'm going to call Priester and see if he needs me to do anything special since it's one of us. Yep. So. Yep. Hey, give me a minute. Yep. Sorry, Birdie. Hey, this crash, um... Birdie, so come work it. Okay, I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've worked a crash with one of us in it. So, no, he's not on duty. He's in his POV. But I just didn't want there to be any like conflict of interest type issues. All right, that was it. I just want to make sure. All right, bye. You good? Yeah, on his way. Huh? Wait on his way. He's not coming. Good? Walking home, but yep, I'm good. I'm sure Neil would come get you if you need. I mean, he's up. I texted him. What a fucking day. Yeah. You don't need EMS? No. Hey, man, your airbag deployed. I gotta ask. I don't know. Alright. One of them days. Yep. He had no right to complain about walking home. He did it because he didn't care about the law and thought he was above it. All right. Here's that back. And then I'm not sure where your brother went, but I have his license too. You right now. Oh, okay. I'm going to just go hand this to him real quick and then it will be done. Is he really? So, Birdie, you, you giving me some indicators? Oh. Listen. Listen. Shit, woman. Listen. <laughs> Valdez is coming out just to... I, I'm not going to lie to you about it. She's on her way? Yeah, she's on her way. Because I'm not... 
I'm not really comfortable with this whole thing at all. But I'm not going to lie to you about it. Oh, no. I, I, I don't mean to put you in that indie. Yep. Yeah. The brave officer addressed the uncomfortable situation and explained everything to the supervisor amazingly. From now on, you know how it goes. You can't consume anything, okay? Because right now you, you're being detained. Wait, what? I'm holding on to you because I have a supervisor coming to see if I need to do a full-fledged DUI investigation or not. So please don't make my life difficult. I would never do that to you. Okay. I, I'm very uncomfortable right now. And, and I apologize for putting you in that position. Are you on? Yes. Yes, I am. And I'm going to remain on for... Because I... Integrity. You know you can't smoke right now. What? You can't consume anything. What? Because if I'm going to do a DUI investigation, it impedes it, so you can't consume anything. Just look at how shameless he was, trying to smoke a cigarette while he was detained. He should have put his head down and sat there feeling disgusted by himself. Tension was palpable as the officer waited, but finally her supervisor arrived on the scene. What happened next was unexpected. A conversation between the two supervisors about Officer Brooks' behavior. Let's find out what they had to say. I ran into, and they would still be sitting in their car. She wants to do DUI, do it. I'm not going to put you in that spot. We have any. Fair, yeah, I will I never up here. Web, I think it's, uh, put anyone in that spot. Three people from his crew that are she's absolutely 100% right in what she's doing. Identification. Are they still sitting in their car? Somebody's in the driver's seat. Yeah. Little silver uh, car? Uh, yep. And are they there because she told yeah. them? You just saw me walk up, so no, I, 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 I really I, don't know. I don't know. I, I could if go she ask, told them, but... If she told them that I'm law enforcement, that... 
100%. He did not need to tell her what she was doing was right. At that point, he was not their supervisor, but just another careless drunk man. You can't consume anything. You're killing me. I'm trying. Come on. So, it's too late now. Question, did you just have somebody else for a while? Okay. I think they're with him because okay. he was still in the car. So he's free to go? Yeah, he's good. Okay. Is he just hanging out? To yeah, because his car's all jacked up on the back. Oh, so we have him with tow, or what is he doing exactly, I guess? Um, I think his sister is coming to pick him up. Do what you gotta do. Well, we're going to go to the back of Sarge's car. Okay. Because that's where my clipboard is. Okay. And that's where the most level ground is. And there's okay. a line. Fair enough. Despite the drunk cop's behavior, he doesn't appear to abuse his power, possibly due to the presence of the body cam, which he checked to see if it was turned on. Nonetheless, he cooperates with the test, and the results are hilarious to watch. However, it is New Year's Eve, so I'm going to leave that up to you. What if you want to keep waiting for a moment, you can what let me know. Tow, they gonna tow it then? So when I call a rotation tow, yeah. whoever's at the top of the list comes and gets it, and usually takes it to their tow yard. And then you can tell your insurance it's at this tow yard. And the insurance will come out and take pictures and do everything else. Probably 23 units, unfortunately. Because, like, if you were going to tow it to your house, you would have to pay them cash to tow yeah. it to your house. Yeah. Probably 23 units, unfortunately. All right, that's fine. So, are you waiting on the insurance? Probably 23 I units, unfortunately, on the channel. I'll do it tomorrow so I can get the home. So, you want me to call the rotation tower? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Put your right foot in front of it with your right heel touching your left toe, keeping your hands at your side, like so. Leaning. Hmm? Just leaning. Okay. I'm trying to find the most <laughs> flat spot. I'm trying. Right. But I mean, it's leaning. But Here, I'm let's, let's do it this way. I'm good. Go ahead and stand here. We'll do it this way. So you're going to stand like this until I advise you to do otherwise. Do not start until I tell you to. Do you understand the directions? You may begin the test. Supervisor is behaving in a wildly unpredictable manner, stumbling around and unable to walk in a straight line. However, he stubbornly refuses to acknowledge the obvious reason for his unsteady behavior. Please don't walk away. I can't walk away. I'm not going to. But you know I gotta finish. Okay. So I don't realize why. I can't fucking do. I can't demonstrate. Yeah. I don't have the balance to demonstrate. Acting like a five-year-old child, Scott finally relented and performed the test. Literally, in uniform, I can't do this shit.
So at this time, I'm asking you to come with me to the station to provide a breath sample. After failing the test miserably, the drunk supervisor is asked to join them back to the police department for a breath sample. And the way he reacts to this is absolutely crazy. We can do to fix this, I feel like fucking everything. I'm sorry. No, you're not these people. That's fine. It's okay. But you can, we already know what the game plan is. Enduring the misery and discomfort caused by the drunk officer, at least Officer Brooke received an apology and a hug. It's not ideal, but things could have ended much worse. I'm very sorry. They put you in this place. a lot different when they ask you in an interview saying, hey, you know, what would you do if this happened to... I know. You're kidding. Believe me. So proud. <laughs> and so sorry. All at the same time. You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> Corporal Bertzik blew two breath alcohol samples of 0.153 and 0.156, nearly twice the legal limit. Bertzik later admitted to drinking Bacardi rum with Diet Coke and driving his car, the report reads. In addition to the DUI charge, Bertzik was cited for reckless driving. What do you think Bertzik deserved? Let me know in the comments below. And if you liked the video, subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one we have in store for you. Thanks for watching. This is Detective Mystery, signing off.